In this section, we are going to discuss about a particular exotic option called chooser options. Now, the unique feature of a chooser option is that when you enter into an option contract, so let's assume that you're purchasing a choose option at T0. Now, at T0, you don't have to decide whether it will be a call option or a put option. You obtain the option to choose whether it's going to be a call or a put option at a later date. Let's assume in this case, it will be T1. So this is what this is a unique feature of a choose option. In other words, when you enter into an option contract, you do not have to decide whether it will be a call option or a put option. But at a later date, of course, before maturity. So let's assume in this case, this particular option matures in two years time. So that's the maturity date. So you will have a particular date before the maturity, of course, where you will give, be given the option to choose whether you want the option to be a call option or a put option. So if you think about it, so let's let's assume this is an European option. So if you think about it, now let's assume in this choose option, you purchase the option. Let's assume this is option A. So you purchase the option at T0. And remember, you do not have to decide whether it has to be a call or a put at the date when you're entering into a contract. So you come to T1. Let's assume T1 is the date where you need to choose whether you want the option to be or a call or a put option. Now, rationally, you would decide whether you want the option to be a call or put based on the value. So if the call option has a higher value, let's say at, at this point at T1, if this is going to be a call option going forward, let's assume that it, it's valued at $100 and the put option is valued at $5, then of course you will choose the call option because call option has a maximum value. You know, it's like having two assets. You would want to hold the one which has a higher value. Now, in another case, if your put option has a higher value than your call option, so here C denotes call option, the value of a European call option, and P denotes the value of a European put option. Now, if your put option has a higher value than your call option, at this point, at T1, then you will, of course, choose the put option. So that's what we are saying. It will be the, the value here will be maximum of the call option or the put option because it depends what's, what's the value and you will, of course, choose that. Now, remember, it, it also depends. Now, if you have, have a particular underlying asset, if the asset value has been going up, at T1, then of course, remember, the call option is more valuable when your underlying asset goes up. So you pro you'll probably, if the asset value has been going upward, you'll probably choose the call option because the call option will have a higher value. But if the asset value, from whatever value it has been at T0, if it has been dropping to a certain point, then probably the put option will have a higher value. So that, that's something to remember. Now, you could, rather than saying maximum of the call or the put value, you can say it this way as well. So you can say the price of the call option. So you take C out of this equation. So the value of the call option plus maximum of zero or the difference between the put price and the call price. So basically you're taking C out of this so c plus max so if you take c out of this this will become zero and then if you take c out of this that will become p minus c so you can rather than saying maximum of the call or the put price you can also say it like this it's the call price plus maximum of with either maximum between zero or the difference between the put price and the call price now you don't have to take call out you can also take the p out and you can say p plus maximum of C minus P comma zero. But here we are just saying you take the call price out and then you say plus maximum of zero or the difference between the put and the call. So that will be the value of your chooser option at T1. So remember, so this, this formula is quite important to remember. The value of your choose option at T1 is this. Now, of course, if you want to know the value at T0, you simply 
calculate this value and you can discount it using the risk-free interest rate and then you get the value of the choose option at t naught. So let's look at some details. Now so we said the value of a choose option at t1 you could denote it using this formula here. So that's the call price plus the maximum of zero or the difference between the put price and the call price. So that's your value of your choose option at T1. Now, if you remember the put call parity, remember the put call parity applies to European options. And we said when we started this, we are assuming these call or put are European options. And the put call parity gives us a relationship between the put price and the call price. And another assumption is that when we use the put call parity, we compare two options. One is a put option, another one is a call option with the same strike. So let's assume that this call and put has the same strike K at maturity, same strike K. So that's the put call parity. The put price less the call price equal the strike price discounted based on the risk-free rate up to today. So that's the present value of the strike price less the asset, the underlying asset. So basically what we are saying is now instead of saying the call price plus the maximum of zero or the difference between the put and the call price. Remember these are European put and calls. We can replace P minus C using this formula here based on the put call parity. So we can say the value of the choose option at T1 equals. So it's the same formula here. We are just replacing P minus C with what I'm showing you here in purple. So it's the call price plus the maximum of zero or the present value of the strike price. Remember, this is the strike price, so you need to discount the strike price up to here. So that's the present value of the strike price minus the spot price at this point, T1. So we are calling it S1. So remember, this is the spot price of the underlying. So that's S1 because we are just saying the spot price at T1, we are saying it's S1. So this is your value of your chooser option at T1. So it's the call price plus the maximum between zero or the present value of your strike price at T1 minus S1. Now, if you carefully look at this, this call price is a call option maturing at time t2 remember this call matures at time t2 uh, in, in this case we are showing it as year two in other words it matures here so this call price is a call option maturing at time to t2 of course we will have a strike of k now this is a put option if you think about it the payoff of a put option is strike minus uh, the underlying so this is a put option maturing at time T1 because we are saying the present value of the strike. So present value of the strike means it's here. And the underlying at time T1 is S1. So that means we are talking about this instance here. It, the, these two are happening here. Remember, that's the strike price, but we are discounting the strike price, price up to T1. So that's what we are saying. Present value of the strike. And then also minus the spot price at time t1 that's what we are saying it as s1 so if you remember the payoff of a put is k minus s in other words strike minus the underlying and you can see by because we are saying it's the present value of the strike we are talking about time t1 and because we are saying s1 that's also at time t1 so this is a put option maturing at time t1 so that's quite an important thing to remember now this call option matures at time t2 which means you need to use this strike price when you're calculating the value of this call option you can use the black scholes model to calculate the value of this call option but one thing you need to watch out is that the time should be t2 and the strike should be k then when you're using when you're trying to calculate the present value of the strike minus s1 of course we are referring to t1 so that's an important thing to remember now once you calculate so this this whole box will give you the 
value of your chooser option at t1 and then if you want to calculate the value of the chooser option as at t0 you simply discount this value using the risk free interest rate so remember the unique feature of a choose option is that when you enter into the option in other words if you purchase a choose option you do not have to decide whether it's going to be a call or put at the time you're purchasing the option you could choose whether it should be a call or a put at a later time so that's the unique feature of a chooser option now few things to remember the value of a chooser option is less than a value of a straddle now if you remember we have covered straddles in another section but if you remember straddle is a combination of calls and puts so since a straddle has a call and a put its value is more than a chooser option because choose option after some point you'll end up with either a call or a put you will not going to have both so you it's, it's important to remember that uh, the value of a straddle will be more than a value of a choose option because a straddle you will have calls and puts together now in a choose option you will not have the calls and puts together after a particular point for example after t1 you'll either go with a call or a put so the value of a straddle will be more than the value of a choose option now another thing to remember the value of a choose option will be definitely more than a individual call or a put now the reason for that is if you think at t not you always have the option to choose whether it's going to be a call or a put so it's as if you're holding both because you you're you're holding that option with you whereas in an individual call or a put you start with a call or a put you are not going to have both but in a choose option you have that option up to t1 so that option has some sort of value so that's what we are saying the choose the value of a choose option will be more than an individual call or a put so this is one of the exotic options have a look at the video again if you need to understand the concepts and also remembering the put call parity is quite important so that you can derive at this formula here so it's quite important also to remember that this call option is based on a call option maturing at time t2 in this case year 2 and this here the present value of the strike minus the spot at t1 is equivalent to a put option maturing at time t1 so that's an important thing to remember if you have any questions post it in the comment section and i will post some additional videos on other exotic options hopefully soon thank you